everybody and welcome to today's video. So I thought I'd do a video about personal statements because if you're in year 12 you may be thinking about starting your personal statement or perhaps you don't really know what one is. So I'm just going to talk you through the structure of this video. So I'm going to start by talking about what a personal statement is if you literally have no idea. Then I'll talk about the timeline of when I did things, so when I started planning it, drafting it, writing it, and then when I submitted it, just in case you want a sort of gauge of when to get things going. And then I'll suggest you some sort of academic things that you could do to put on your personal statement and maybe some extracurricular things. Obviously, there's constraints with what you can do because of the whole situation at the moment, but there are so many things you can do just from sitting in your bedroom that would be really good to put on a personal statement. And I'll talk you through a step-by-step -step of how to write it because I feel like I did mine in a little bit of a different way to a lot of ways that other people did it and I feel like it worked quite well. Obviously, I just want to put a disclaimer out. This is my experience writing my personal statement. Everyone's personal statement is so different or at least it should be different because they do check if you've plagiarized it or not. Therefore, don't take what I say as gospel but I hope it does help you in some way. So you may be wondering what on earth is a personal statement? So I thought I'd just clarify it. So it's basically a brief description of who you are, why you want to apply to uni, why you'll fit the course that you're applying for. Um, and it goes off on your UCAS application when you're applying to uni, along with your predicted grades and your teacher references and your GCSEs and like some other little bits of information. It is 4,000 characters long and 47 lines. Russell Group Universities or universities where you're applying for quite an academic course, they do prefer your personal statements be mostly academic stuff. So I've heard the rule that about 60-40, so 60% has to be academic, 40% can be about any extracurricular things you've done. For Oxbridge, they sort of recommend 80% academic or even 90% academic. Obviously, like it's completely up to you. So it is subject specific, so you can't start writing your personal statement until you know exactly what course you're applying for. And if you're applying for completely different subjects, at different unis, then you will sort of have to make sure your personal statement fits all of the subjects you're applying for. So you may have heard the rumor that personal statements don't matter. And I feel like this sort of is true because when I spoke to, I think it was the head of admissions at a college in Cambridge for my subject, they said that they don't really care about personal statements just because they said like a parent could write it and that happens a lot. So they said they sort of just take it with a pinch of salt and because Cambridge have so much other evidence and so much other data in comparison to other universities, they don't really care about your personal statement. Whereas I have heard at other open days, they said that your personal statement could literally be the difference between you getting in and not. I would say like put effort into it, definitely, but I wouldn't say get really stressed out over it. Like it's just not worth it. Your mock exam grades are the most important bit of evidence you're getting because if your predicted grades are nowhere near the uni requirement, then they're just not gonna look at your application at all. Whereas if your grades are good and you've got a good personal statement, then you stand quite a good chance of getting in. So now I'll go through the timeline of when I started thinking about my personal statement and when I eventually put it in, because I would have loved to know this when I was in year 12, because I had no idea if I was doing things too early or too late. Around about now, I started really thinking about my personal statement. Yeah, I would say around about this time, maybe start mind mapping or just making a list of things that you've done that you possibly think you could put in your personal statement or things that you could do over summer to put in your personal statement. And over the summer, I was physically doing the thing. So I was reading the book, watching documentaries, that sort of thing. I don't think in the autumn, especially now because year 12 will have a lot of catching up to do. I do feel really sorry for you guys, but at least you'll have a freshers. We won't have a freshers. I don't really think you want to be doing extracurricular or super curricular stuff in September, October, November sort of time. At the end of August, I made my first draft of my personal statement and I did so many more drafts over September. And because I was applying for Cambridge, it was the early deadline of the 15th of October. All the other courses at the other universities, it is the 15th of January, um, which seems ages away, but your school may have an internal deadline before. And I submitted my personal statement early October. It was probably around the 6th or the 10th or something like that. If you're on the fence about applying for Oxbridge, I would honestly say, even if you're not that convinced about it, 
get your personal statement done early, do early entry because then it is all out of the way and you get your teacher's focus early on. So when I was doing my personal statement, there was only a handful of students who were applying for early entry. So I could go back to my teachers as many times as I wanted because they physically had the time. So I think I mentioned these terms earlier, but I would just like to clarify what I meant by them. So I said extracurricular stuff. So that can include anything you've done over the past couple of years, any sports teams that you're part of, any volunteering you've done, relevant work experience, any clubs that you're part of, um, if you've done Duke of Edinburgh, NCS. I mean, I don't put NCS in my personal statement because am I proud that I did NCS? Not really. And then supercurricular is a term, a lot of teachers used to use it, so I'm just gonna use it now. It's sort of academic extracurricular thing academic conferences, if you've read any books, any journals, taster lectures. The easiest ones out of them to do is definitely reading books that are linked to your subject, documentaries, podcasts. And if you're looking for books but you have no idea where to start, maybe have a look at the reading lists for your course at some university that you're applying to. Also have a look at the professors and the lecturers who teach at some of the unis that you're applying for because they may have written a book or an interesting article. Also there are so many academic sort of magazines so if you're applying for a science subject you can look at new scientists, if you're applying for economics or politics The Economist is really good and they also have a really good YouTube channel and also National Geographic if you're applying for geography or biology. Now I'm going to talk about the steps that I went through when writing my personal statement and planning it and that sort of thing so as I said the first thing I did was make a massive mind map then I made a list of all of my favorite topics and interests within the field of geography just so I had a couple of ideas in my head of avenues that I could go down for personal statements because the subjects that you're applying for are going to be so broad and you can't cover literally everything. So I wanted to narrow it down to my favorite sort of interest that I could talk about. And if you want some help with that, definitely just look at the prospectus or online, just search up your course and perhaps a couple of the unis you're applying to and just see what sort of common themes come up in each course. But then I would just say, get a draft down. It doesn't matter if it's too long or perhaps it doesn't hit the word count, just get something down. Look at examples of personal statements online. So I'm going to put some little snippets of my personal statement in this video so you can have a look there. But if you want to read full personal statements, there are so many online. I will link below some places where I found personal statements, but if you literally just Google your subject, and then personal statement, it should come up. Obviously they do go through a plagiarism check, so make sure that even subconsciously you're not stealing phrases. Then you may want to think about the structure of your personal statements and what you're going to put in each paragraph. You always need an intro. I would say don't make it too cringe. Some people start off with a question, which I don't really like that. I was advised not to do that. If you do that, that's completely up to you, but for me personally, I wouldn't start with a question. And a lot of people also start, which you need say they absolutely hate is when people say oh since I was young I've always wanted to be xyz which is just not true so yeah if you're doing some sort of anecdote or something I would just be really careful with it I kept mine so simple I just literally wrote a line about geography and then I sort of went into other stuff and perhaps you could end it on your future ambitions that's what I did with my personal statement I said that you know sort of from all of this this is why I want to do this course and what I I think I'll get out of it in the future. Perhaps if you have a career in mind, you could put that at the end. Then you just sort of get into the real meat of your personal statement or tofu if you're vegan. Make sure that you don't list everything that you've done. You have to sort of critically engage with it. And what I mean by that is say perhaps your favorite bits of what you've read or perhaps if you've disagreed with anything that you've read or watched or listened to, just be like, you know, I don't agree with this. My personal view is blah, blah, blah. Um, there are some like articles out there and stuff about how best to do this. So I'll try and link some below. Say that you've got something from it rather than I just read this. And the thing that I found really helpful to sort of keep track of what I was putting in my personal statement, well, I just made a list on Word once I'd made a mind map of all the things that I wanted to include. So all of my super curricular stuff at the top and then my little extracurricular things. I thought if I have time, I'll just slot them in. As I was drafting my personal statement, I would highlight in green what I'd included in the personal statement um, in my little plan. I'd highlight it in green. And then in orange, I'd highlight the stuff that I wanted to include. So I really would sort of like to put it in. And if I can sort of take certain things out, I'd like to put that in. And then the stuff that I left black was just the stuff 
um, that was good. I thought I might include, but I never did in the end. So yeah, I just found that super helpful. And when I was showing people my personal statement, I'd also take with them sometimes that plan and say, oh, this is the stuff that I've included. Is there anything in this list that you think I should put in instead? So yeah, I would suggest doing a little color coding. Once you have sort of got your first draft or maybe you've drafted it again yourself, I would say try and get other people to read it. I think this is probably the most important part. My school honestly was so helpful with personal statement help. So I'll just give you suggestions of people that you could talk to. You could give it to someone in your family first just to check for grammatical errors and see if it flows right. Use Grammarly, just search up Grammarly um, and it will check the grammar and the sentences and the structure of them. I first of all I think gave it to my head of sixth form. If you have a careers advisor in school, obviously they read so many personal statements and CVs and that sort of thing. So you could give it to them. I also showed it to my tutor slash my mentor because I think she made it a rule that everyone who was applying to uni had to show it to her. It's a make a big margin and double space it. So that in between the lines and in the margin, whoever's like having a look through can write feedback and stuff. Or if you're emailing it to them, make sure that they can edit it um, and add little comments on the side. Also give it to your subject teacher if you're applying for a subject that you already studied. So I gave it to my geography teacher, although I'd only had her for a couple of weeks at the time. She absolutely tore my personal statement to shreds, but she did it for a good reason, I guess. And I trusted her opinion because I went to the summer school and um, I had a contact for one of the geography lecturers there and he said while we were at the summer school when we're applying for uni if we end up applying for Nottingham you can send us your personal statement and we'll have a little read through and that was so helpful. I also had an Oxbridge teacher who did the like little Oxbridge classes and I gave it to her and she was so good at going through it she was really thorough. Although I would say with this just a word of warning you will inevitably get conflicting advice. I got told that my personal statement was to didn't have any structure like it was just a bit of a mess but then another teacher I spoke to said it really had a common thread and it flowed really nicely so that is literally contrasting advice and I was really stuck for a while because I was like oh maybe I should you know put it into paragraphs better and I should separate it more but then on the other hand a teacher would say, no, like, I really like the way you've done it. It's quite unique. So in the end, I think you sort of have to go with your gut instinct. Unless everyone said the exact same thing, then maybe don't ignore that. In the end, I think go with your gut instinct, but it is really helpful to get advice. When you're choosing the structure for your personal statement, some people say, do an intro about why you want to apply. Go on to what your A-levels have taught you, then talk about your wider reading, then talk about extracurricular, then do a conclusion. That is the sort of structure that I've heard a lot of times. I sort of knocked that out the window. I just thought that was too strict for me. So I basically didn't really talk about my A-levels, but then I've read so many examples where they did and it worked quite well. But personally, I just thought that would have been a little bit of a waste of time just because I wanted to talk about the bits that I'm properly interested in geography. And some of that didn't even come in the A-level. And I thought they already know the A-levels that I've done. But I did link in the fact that I have done geography A-level and I used like, a line of what I've done in geography to springboard me onto other ideas, but I didn't make a whole paragraph the focus of what I've learned at A level. I sound like this is revolutionary. I'm sure other people have done this. So obviously I had paragraphs, but like they're a bit all over the place. So I had sort of a common thread running through it. So I mainly focused on the idea of climate change and sustainable development. And I made sure I said that at the beginning and I came back to it at the end. My paragraphs integrated super curricular stuff and like random bits and pieces all in the same paragraphs. So yeah, there are loads of different ways you can do it. In the end, I think I did about nine drafts, which is maybe a little bit excessive. What I made sure I did was I didn't keep editing on the same document because I wanted to keep a track of what I'd been doing. And I also thought if I make a massive monumental change and I'm not happy with it, then I would have just erased my, you know, my first draft that I really liked. I copied and pasted the new draft every time. So I literally had nine different Word documents with draft one, draft two, draft three. Definitely save it on loads of different things just in case it goes missing or something happens to it. So I saved it on my memory stick. I saved it to Google Drive. As I said, I will leave below so many personal statement resources and stuff that I found helpful. So if you want to have a look, they will all be in the description below. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed and comment below any tips you may have for other people 
people or if you have any questions relating to personal statements, let me know. As I said, I'm not an expert. I'm just someone who's applied and who's got offers through. I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're all safe and well and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.